I know the place where I was born, the city of San Francisco, the name of the town where I grew up and spent my youth, however, I have forgotten. My name is Sebastian Server, son of the businessman John Henry Server. My father owned a factory in California that consumed his time. The company had been created by my great-grandfather. Although work took him away from the family more often than he should have, I have pleasant memories of him. He was a confident and courageous man. I can say the same thing about my mother. She was a sweet and attentive woman. The truth is that my family was the wealthiest in the small town. My father regularly warned me about the envy of the neighbors. I was able to confirm this every time I accompanied him on his walks. I liked to watch people, see how they interacted with us. Many men cast violent glances at my father, who walked with the confidence of a powerful man. I was always a lonely boy. I didn't have any friends. That my family was the richest in town contributed to the fact that the rest of the students saw me as a stranger. I guess it's better that it was like this. I can say that I had a good relationship with the owner of a bookstore in the main street. In other shops, I was not welcome. Unfortunately, the bookstore closed in 1942. I was 16 at the time. The owner moved to another city, and I never saw him again. My other attempt at friendship was with a border collie puppy that I frequently greeted when I went home from school. His owner had a reputation for being cruel to his animals, and I played with the dog whenever I could. The school was at the other end of town, and when I finished my studies, I stopped seeing the puppy. I started working in my father's company as soon as I had the opportunity. He was of the opinion that I should accumulate as much experience as possible before inheriting the business. I didn't work long with my father. He died that same year. Three months later, it was my mother who passed away. I was 21 years old. Part of the town seemed to rejoice at those tragedies. Being the sole heir and having assumed control of the company, I gained a new perspective on the relationship between my family and the town. Although I had already sensed it, the resentment we received came mostly from dissatisfied workers who demanded higher wages and better working conditions. My predecessors had been inflexible in these respects, however, I was of a softer a more amicable character, and quickly agreed to the demands of the employees. The truth is that I didn't know if those decisions were economically viable. I did it driven by fear and kindness in equal parts. The power of the company attracted local politicians, who talked with impunity. My position as director revealed to me the businesses in which my family had been involved. It was impossible for me to deny the corruption. I, who was less ambitious than my father, wanted to distance myself from clandestine dealings. Now I know that people saw signs of weakness in my attitude. They were probably right. My good intentions did not affect the dispositions that the neighbors had towards me. The name server continued to bear the local animosity and antipathy. I assumed that my innocent change in company policies did little to mitigate the weight my ancestors had on the town. I had only been running the company for a year when the hatred of the neighbors seemed to subside. The change began on a specific day. I remember it was Saturday. 
I received fewer threatening glances and fewer insults, which I was already used to. The pleasant trend continued, but after a few days I understood something strange. People's antipathy had declined because they pretended not to know me. At first, I was glad to see this new attitude, which caused some awkward conversations. But a week later, with the amnesia spreading, not even my employees remembered me. The situation took an even more unlikely turn when some neighbors stopped seeing me, as if I were invisible. A waiter was the last person to greet me. I mixed with my employees, hoping to hear them talk about me. They didn't see me and didn't mention me. I had ceased to exist. One Monday, I went to my office and I found another person doing my job. The new director was a former employee. The next day, I came across obituaries announcing my death. I attended my own funeral, which was punctually carried out. I exhausted my last drops of sanity there. Other people now lived in my house. I wandered mindlessly through the town and slept in the street. I meditated all that a madman can meditate on whether I was dead, on whether I was a ghost or an invisible man. My aimless walk took me to parts of the town that I hadn't visited in a long time. I saw the school, I followed the street, and then someone recognized me. The border collie had grown up and was no longer a puppy. He sniffed me and licked my face, and I played with him like I did in my student days. The reunion restored my sanity it made me understand many things that now seem obvious. We both left the town that same afternoon. Me, disgusted with that unworthy place, and he, tired of the mistreatment of his owner. The most perceptive reader will have noticed that in this story there are not many descriptions of the town or its people, nor are their names mentioned. The inhabitants wanted to take revenge on my family by playing with oblivion, and they ended up being the forgotten ones. My friend and I continued our way on foot. We didn't turn around at any moment, but we knew that the town behind us had disappeared. Nothing remains of it, not even in the tale of its own disappearance is it mentioned. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please consider giving a like and subscribing to the channel. Have a good day.